Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is John of Supporters for the sixth election day. Uh, you can see that the market was happy with what it believed going into the final uh, bit of the election uh, numbers. Clearly, we have the rising orange, uh, but it's still, like I was talking about before, below the green. And the green is above cyan in this particular case, uh, just a little bit, minus 466 to 530, which indicates continuation of the bull move uh, that began once the dip was uh, first initiated by the crossover of the green. Uh, again, we still look at the steel and have a question mark as to whether or not uh, it'll be sustainable. Now, the steel's starting to fall, so perhaps we get enough of a decline that it will reset itself underneath. The only problem with that is sometimes that happens at the same time you get a DOC spread, but for all intents and purposes at this particular point, it's doing exactly what we expect. So things must have uh, clarified for uh, market players. Plus, you have the new fund money coming in. Uh, we talked about this at the month would begin just as all of that new money uh, courses in. You can see the orange here much closer to having crossed over, but did not. Um, and the NASDAQ is a little bit weaker overall than the um, S&P. And it's to be bolstered by the support found in the euro right at the base. Uh, puts it back up. Uh, what's right in the middle of the range, right where we expect it. So it's not anything to be really uh, overly shocked about. Bonds remaining at the low end of it uh, as people really, well, it, obviously there's an indication that rates should continue to rise given the wage pressures and that would uh, justify additional rate increases and or uh, a reduction in TLT to support the yield that is going to be returned. And the bigger the yield gets, um, the more stocks will be under pressure, at least from a performance standpoint. Uh, and oil having reached now down all the way to uh, previous lows from way back in August. And actually, we have to shrink this now because we have to start looking at where the last dip was, which was right about here, just under 13. Uh, when we were in June and that, uh, right before the buildup started, before summer and gold, it's hovering at this elevated area, which yeah, there's nothing particularly special about it. Uh, there really isn't this strong belief that uh, any type of financial crisis exists as far as the economy. And so you don't really need to uh, hedge the inflation in gold as much as you would still be in equities until such time as you think that uh, you've reached that curve where... Um, stagnation begins, and that would be the critical element. Until that happens, um, you still want to be in uh, equities. And you can see it was a pretty benign day. There really wasn't anything special happening. We just had normal wave action back and forth. Uh, every time we got to the little peak areas up near the highs, we got uh, clean cell signals, DOC spreads. They broke down. Actually, uh, this one was a little bit further uh, than most as it came down and retested into that, uh, well, 23% was a little bit higher by this point that it reached that lows, but it got right into the middle of that range and found support there. And this is that new money coming in. They're buying cautiously and it's causing a nice elevation. And that's currently what we see right now. So I think everything's going to be pretty much uh, on hold. People are going to be really looking for those exit polls towards the end of the day and seeing if they can glimmer any uh, inside to post-market trade, but traditionally uh, after midterm going in through that December and that uh, market typically rises. So that's no guarantee, but given the fact that we're seeing a pretty strong uh, economic growth in that, uh, hard to imagine that we're not going to see a uh, push towards the 3,000 on the S&P, uh, regardless of what you think about uh, valuations and that, because the only valuation that matters is where things are at right now and what their viewpoint of what they will be sometime in the future, whether it's real or arbitrary, irrelevant. You have to trade what is, and that's currently what is taking place. And so that's what we like to do. And that's why it's so important to be able to see how things are changing, because it could seem beautiful, and then all of a sudden it's not. And then we can completely change our thought process. So remain flexible and stay with it, and hope everyone gets out and votes. Trade well.